to make things a little bit easier on you this week, today I'll be sharing five new dinners that you can make in only about 10 minutes or less. These dinners are so quick, easy, and delicious. Plus, I get requests from time to time to share my family's favorite quick and easy side dishes, so I'll also be sharing a couple side dishes with you today. I can't wait for you to see it. Let's get to my kitchen and let's get started. To start us off today, we are making these garlic butter chicken bites over my popular mashed potatoes. So I just started out by peeling and dicing about eight medium-sized russet potatoes. Over to a large pot of boiling water, I'm adding the potatoes right in there and just boil them until they are fork tender. This garlic or mashed potato recipe is on page 42 in my cookbook and you'll find it in the sides and appetizers section. Whenever I make these mashed potatoes for anyone, everybody goes crazy over them just because because they're so flavorful. But while those are cooking away, I'm going to get started on my chicken. So I have about a pound and a half of chicken breast right here that I cubed. I added in two tablespoons of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon and a half of salt, a teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon and a half of Italian seasoning, and a tablespoon of minced garlic. I gave this a good stir to coat the chicken in the flour and the seasonings. Over to the pan on my stove, I added in a tablespoon of butter, and once that melted down, I added the chicken right in there. Don't stir the chicken a ton while it is cooking. Wait a few minutes until you flip it over, just so the flour doesn't become gummy. So you want to form like a really nice crust on the outside of the chicken. It is just going to make it like crispy and so delicious. But now that the potatoes are tender, I just strained them, and I'm just going to add about six tablespoons of butter into the same pot once the butter melted down, I added in my two teaspoons of dried rosemary, a teaspoon of dried thyme, two teaspoons of salt, a teaspoon of pepper, a tablespoon of minced garlic, and I'm going to give this a stir until the garlic and all those seasonings are so fragrant. Add those tender potatoes back into the pot. Now you're going to want to slowly add in about a cup of milk. Make sure you add it in slowly, and for some reason I just couldn't find my potato masher. I looked everywhere for it and sometimes my little ones like hide my kitchen gadgets or like use it with play-doh but just give this a good mix and mash those potatoes until they are perfectly beautifully smooth but back over to the chicken now that it is cooked through I added in a half a tablespoon of butter and a tablespoon of minced garlic let the butter melt down and give this a really good stir then you could serve this delicious dinner up we of course served ours over the bed of mashed potatoes this has so much delicious delicious like garlic herby flavor in the chicken and the mashed potatoes. Seriously, if you haven't tried those mashed potatoes yet, you absolutely need to. We also serve this with steamed broccoli on the side. Now we're making this angel hair pasta with tomatoes. I have a large pot of boiling water right here. I'm adding in eight ounces of angel hair pasta or you could use any pasta. Just cook it according to the package instructions. But now that that's cooking away into this bowl, I'm dicing three large Roma tomatoes. Then I sliced two green onions. Next I added in a half a cup of Parmesan cheese along with a tablespoon of minced garlic. Now I'm going to add in a fourth a cup of fresh basil. I use the semi fresh basil because that's all my store had but you could use like a two teaspoons of dried basil if you don't have fresh basil just to let you know next I added in a teaspoon of salt with a half a teaspoon of pepper and I gave this a good stir I'll set it to the side now that my pasta is cooked through I just strained it then I added in a fourth a cup of olive oil next add in that diced tomato mixture then after you add that in give this a really good stir and then you could serve this up That angel hair pasta cooks in just a few minutes, so this dinner comes together in absolutely no time at all. It is so fresh and flavorful tasting. Also, this is a meatless meal for all of my meatless meal friends. I'm sure you are absolutely going to love it. It is so, so good. Now we are making these chicken cordon bleu pockets. So I have a can of Pillsbury Crescents right here. I just unrolled it onto my cutting board. Now I have two cups of seasoned cooked shredded chicken. I also have sliced Swiss cheese and some deli ham. Place a slice of the deli ham onto a crescent, then sprinkle some of that chicken on top, and then just use a half a slice of cheese. You could really use any cheese you like. We like Swiss cheese because that's kind of what you do for chicken cordon bleu, but 
it was really any cheese. You could use pepper jack, cheddar, but just roll it up after you add the cheese on and repeat it for all of your chicken cordon blues. I'll set this to the side. This butter mixture is definitely optional, but it makes them extra good. I have two tablespoons of melted butter into this bowl. I added in a half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, garlic powder, and onion powder. Then I gave it a stir. I'm going to place all of my chicken cordon bleu pockets onto a sheet pan lined with parchment paper. Brush that buttery mixture all over the top. Then bake this in a preheated oven to 375 degrees for about eight to 10 minutes or until the tops are golden brown just like this. These chicken cordon bleu pockets are absolutely deliciously phenomenal. They are so, so good. You could, of course, have them for dinner, but you could also make them for snacks, appetizers, or for lunch. They're so versatile, so you could like add ingredients to them or subtract ingredients. They're so good. I've been craving these sliders like crazy recently and I can't believe I have never made them here on YouTube. So I have a pound of ground beef in this bowl. I added in a teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and paprika. Mix this mixture all together. I'm using my meat masher or you could use like a hand or really anything. But now form these into small sliders. So remember you want to make them small. My pound of ground beef made about 10 sliders. Over to this pan on my stove, I'm adding in a half a tablespoon of olive oil and a half a tablespoon of butter. Once the butter has melted, add some super thin sliced onions down and then place a slider on top of the onions. This will give the sliders so much great flavor and it will cook the onions perfectly. Of course, if you're not an onion fan, you certainly do not have to do this. I didn't do it with all of our sliders even. Just press the sliders down with the back of a spatula. This will make them even thinner and just cook them through. Then remove Move them to a plate and then you could serve them up. We topped ours in like Hawaiian rolls so those Hawaiian sweet rolls are just delicious toasted with a burger. We also topped ours with cheese, a little bit of iceberg lettuce, and tomato. I also serve this with a side salad. These sliders are so good you could top them with anything you enjoy. You have to try them. Now we are making these fajita bowls over taco rice. So over to my Instant Pot, I'm going to get started on the rice. The rice recipe is on page 53 in my cookbook. There's also optional instructions that tells you how to make Italian rice on that same page too if you want. But into my Instant Pot, I'm adding a tablespoon of olive oil along with about a cup and a half of water, then add in one cup of rinsed jasmine rice, or you could use regular white rice. And then I added in a tablespoon of taco seasoning. This is going to give the rice a lot of added flavor. Give this a stir and then put the lid on top. Set the valve to sealing and then I just press the rice button and then there you go. Super easy. Now I'm going to cut up my vegetables. So I'm going to slice one red onion and two bell peppers. Over to the pan on my stove, I added in a tablespoon of olive oil and once the oil was hot, I added those vegetables right in there. Just add in about a pound and a half of cubed chicken with two tablespoons of taco seasoning. Give this a stir to coat everything in the seasoning and cook the chicken through. I do wanna let you know for all of my recipes, you could always double them for more people or half them for less people if you'd like. After the chicken was cooked through, I added in a can of drained and rinsed black beans and I gave it a stir, but here's what our rice looks like once it is tender. It didn't stick to the bottom of the Instant Pot. That's what I like about this rice. It works really really well, but we like to serve our fajita chicken and vegetables over the rice and then top it with any toppings that you like. We topped ours with a little bit of cheese and lime, but you could top yours with like sour cream, avocado, really anything that you have on hand. This is so flavorful and so good. You don't want to miss the next video, so make sure you're subscribed. I'll see you there. Bye for now.